The adoption of the agenda is resolved that the agenda for the January 19, 2024 meeting be accepted as presented with the addition of Manitoba Accessibility Fund under communications, utility deficit recovery under unfinished business, and an RF now path addition and a letter of support for nomination of the Sewers River Recreation Commission for the Recreation Manitoba Connect Point Award. In favor. In favor. We resolved that the minutes of December 15, 2023, regular meeting of council be hereby approved as circulated. Let me remove that. Councillor Doan, seconder. Councillor Fisher. Any errors or omissions? All in favor? In favor. Be resolved that the January 9th, 2024 general accounts payables being checks number 6956 to 6963, 6965 to 6970, 6972 to 6987, and 6989 to 7058 in the amount of $264,271.33 be hereby approved. So I need to move that. Councillor Fisher, second Councillor McDonald. Discussion? All in favor? Favor. Yeah, you close the door there, please. Be resolved general accounts payable being check 6964, 6971, and 6988. Payable to Mike Fisher, Bob McDonald, and Mike Fisher in amounts of $30.60, and $153, and $145 per year by approved. Let me leave that. Don't second Councilor McGregor. Discussion? All in favor? In favor. Please resolve the correct deposit 299 being staff payable for the period September 11th to December 22nd, 2023. And the amount of $12,032.51 be hereby approved. Let me move that. Councilor Brown, seconder. Councilor McGregor, discussion. All in favor? In favor. Please resolve the direct deposit 300. Uh, being year end staff payouts in the amount of $8,573.93 per year by approved. We move that. McDonald's, seconder. Mr. Fisher, discussion. All in favor? In favor. We resolve the direct deposit 301 being staff payroll for the period December 25th, 2023 to January 5th, 2024, in the amount of $12,245.64 to be hereby approved. Can we move that, please? Councilor Fisher, uh, Councilor Jones, rather, seconder. Councilor McGregor, for discussion. All in favor? In favor. It resolved direct deposit 298 being council indemnities for the month of December 2023 in the amount of $7,545.61 be hereby approved. Remove that. Council McDonald, seconder. Council McGregor, discussion. All in favor? In favor. It resolved at the January 9, 2024 utility accounts payable being checks number 1096 to 1112. In the amount of fifteen thousand seven hundred and forty-seven dollars and thirty-eight cents, be hereby approved. Do that, Councillor Fisher, seconder. Councillor McGregor, discussion. I got a quick question uh, about the check eleven oh nine power at list station. This was what it, you know, an issue that was. No, <laughs> sorry. Yes. No, that's okay. Oh, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, can I uh, 
Frank, what I understand with that is they had, it was at the lift station over here at First Street where it lifts at the top of the hill and it had pump troubles. I, I, I think that's what it was. It was uh, the control box wasn't getting enough power or something. They had, I think they had a pump from Frank. So, my knowledge, that's what it was. Yeah, it says uh, December 16th, call to check power for lift station at the bottom of the hill for pumping water to the top. Now, one motor to be in good, it'd be no good, disconnected, motor in place. Disconnected motor replaced disconnect switch for that motor. Okay. All in favor? In favor. It resolved that the statement of revenue and expenditure report to December 31st, 2023 be received as presented. So we didn't move that. Councilor McGowan, seconder. Councilor McGregor, discussion. All in favor? In favor. We have resolved that the bank reconciliation for the month of December 2023 be approved as previously circulated. I need to move that. Mr. Jones, Second Councilor McGregor, discussion? All in favor? In favor. Okay, so. Um, the delegation is on here right now. We'll get, maybe move on to communications and catch up. Okay. Under the order of communications, there are several from the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, uh, two of them dated December the 8th, December 13th, two on December 22nd, and <coughs> one on January 5th. The Brandon Neighborhood Renewal Corporation provided information on the call for participation. The Construction Association of Rural Manitoba provided information on construction-based grants. EcoQuest was providing information on disaster mitigation workshops. Environment and Climate Change Canada provided information on species at risk. The Federation of Canadian Municipalities provided three communiques. They're dated December the 11th, December the 18th, and January the 8th. New on the list was the information from the Manitoba Accessibility Fund for the 2024-2025 intake. And we noted on that one that the deadline for application is in February. So if there was any interest in applying, we would need to have a resolution at this meeting in order to apply. Taking a look at it, there is probably work we could do. The downside is, is it probably requires um, a fair amount of research in order to come up with accurate figures. So I'm just not sure with the short notice on this one that we have the opportunity to apply. Uh, the Manitoba Accessibility Office provided information on celebrating successes of 2023. Manitoba Crime Stoppers provided signage for um, four signboards to be installed in the municipality. Manitoba Health Seniors and Long-Term Systems provided the copy of the Medical First Responders License. Manitoba Senior Communities gave information on their First Link Client Support Program. Uh, as Council's aware, Census Chartered Professionals were out here doing their interim audit uh, at the end of 2023, and they have provided their report and did not bring anything out of the ordinary. And we received a thank you from the Nesbitt Community Club. Okay. Be resolved that the above noted communication will be received. We to move that. Mr. Fisher, seconder. Mr. Jones, discussion. All in favor? In favor. So, committee reports um, start with Ward 3, South Ward. Councillor Fisher, you have no written report. You have some? No written report as. Uh, I have been to a conservation meeting and uh, just keep driving the roads. So, so. Mr. Jones? I uh, just uh, talked to certain uh, residents about the uh, roads and uh, about uh, Lake Clement. Okay. Councillor Hatch has a written report. Anything to add? No, Councillor Hatch? Uh, no, everything's in my report. Similar to uh, Councillor Jones, uh, road discussions, snow plowing discussions, and uh, the committee. 
Okay. How's it going? We have a written report and it's dead. I'll just add Valley Lodge. Valley Lodge, uh, we had a water line break this week. Never had one break in from the time it was built like 50 some years ago. Frozen and cut. So we're, we got a fix to put the fence up in there and we, uh, we're going to have a meeting uh, probably then the first part of February. So we'll uh, have probably an update after, after that. Okay. Mr. McGregor, you've written a report. Anything to add? Nothing. Okay. <clears throat> then to mine, well, I guess I should add that we had, did have a meeting with AMM executive yesterday. Which was a very good meeting, a lot of good discussion as to what the AMM can do for us. Uh, some councillors were very nice. Was, uh, overall, I thought it was a very good meeting. So, um, finance report, anything further? CAO first. Oh, I'm sorry, CAO. <laughs> Get right over you. That's fine. I was also just going to say that with the AMM here yesterday, it was good to hear some of the support administratively that we can get through their office. And one of the issues that had been sent or discussed yesterday, we sent to Dennis Volkoff, and he's already gotten a bit of a reply and forwarded it on that was related to the dam in Wallonisa. And so they've already forwarded that on to their subcommittee. Okay, finance officer. Sorry. Uh, just that I was talking to the province and they said they finally received the federal allocation for our second uh, gas tax. So we should be getting a second the final payment of the 2020 Wait, gas tax in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, public works, any of that your report? Uh, I'm just going to add that our GPSs are being fixed. One of them is fixable, the other one probably not. Has a broken wire right now. I don't know if they can rewire it or if they have to replace it. So that's why it's not showing up on that. You'll let us know. Yeah. Yeah. The fire chief's report is there. One thing I'll remind counselors is that under the procedure bylaw, written reports are supposed to be into the uh, CAO prior to meetings so included, included in the uh, agenda package. So just going forward, written reports are required. Okay, be it resolved that the verbal and written reports be received. Somebody move that. Councilor Fitt and Joe, uh, Councilor what's your name? Councilor Dong, moves it. Seconder, Councilor McGregor. Further discussion? All in favor? In favor. Okay, under bylaws, be it resolved that bylaw number 36 2023, being a second bylaw, being a bylaw to amend fees and charges. Bylaw number, oh, we just, be it resolved that the bylaw number 36 2023 being a bylaw to amend fees and charges by uh, bylaw number 08 2020 be read a second time. We need to move that section. Councilor McDonald, seconder. Councilor McGregor, <coughs> discussion. <coughs> All in favor? In favor. We have resolved that the bylaw number 36 2023 be read a third and final time. Move, please move Councilor Fisher, seconder. Councilor McGregor, this is a recorded vote. Recorded vote. The third reading. All in favor? In favor. Thank you. Okay. We have resolved that bylaw number 36. 37-2023 being a new procedure bylaw be amended by adding in clause 3.17 immediately following call to order the words land acknowledgement. Let me to please move that. Councillor Fisher, second. I mean, Councillor Jones. Take <laughs> <laughs> your name first. Yeah. You also switch seats. Councillor McGregor seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? In favor. Be it resolved that, that, be it resolved that bylaw not be amended in clause 3.3 by deleting the words Friday of each month at the hour of 9 a.m. and re replacing therefore the word Tuesday of each month at the hour of 4.30 p.m. We have somebody that wish to move that. Councilor Jones, switch positions. <laughs> Seconder. <laughs> discussion. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I can't be in favor of this, unfortunately. It's uh, 
just does not work with my life, but uh, completely understand that it would be more beneficial for others' lives. So uh, I just wanted to, you know, that I will not be in favor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm definitely not in favor. I'd like to see Tuesday at nine in the morning, like we had before. So I'm not in favor. Of course, there be that. I would say do this one first, and then if there's another one. Further, Councillor Mr. Chairman, uh, I can't see that this is such a hardship for anyone. And I think it would certainly, uh, as I've said in, in the past, and I've said in an email the other day, I think that uh, we, need, we need to make every effort to bring in new people and younger people. And to do that, we need to be flexible in our meeting times. So uh, I certainly support this. Any further? So we'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed? Opposed. Peters, you wish to make? Yes. And I, Mr. Chairman, 9 a.m. on Tuesdays. Tuesdays, and you want Tuesday at 9 a.m.? Yes. So be it resolved that bottom number bylaw be amended to clause 3.3 by deleting the words Friday of each month at the hour of 9 a.m. and replacing there for the words Tuesday of each month at the hour of 9 a.m. You wish to have that? Okay. Seconder? Councilor McGregor, discussion? Just uh, may I speak, Mr. Chair? Uh, <laughs> being on numerous committees, I'm going to say that evening meetings do not work for me. Uh, just there, it's an impossibility. Uh, as for bringing younger members on, I've been on boards all my life, and it's not the younger ones that want to be part of this. So, and doesn't matter what time of the day it is or whatever, but just I need my evening. So, and I, I mornings works best for me. So. And that's all I got to say right now. I've said my piece to everyone, and I knew what the vote was going to be, so I really have nothing else to say. And first, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of the Tuesday 9 a.m.? In favor. Opposed? Okay, to be resolved that the necessary changes to be made to clauses 3.14, 3.15, 4.7, 4.8, 4.23, 4.3, 4 to reflect meeting days as time and as times as outlined above. So we take move that. Professor McGregor, seconder. Dr. McDonald, discussion. If council would like, I could go through and let you know what each of those changes would be. Sorry, McGregor and Keith for seconder. Uh, no. Yes, if you it, could join you. Yeah, please. it was included in the package in the event that it was going back to a Tuesday. I just didn't know what time. So 3.3 .3 was changed to be the Tuesday at 9. Four point seven will indicate that we need the information one day prior. 4.8 will indicate six days prior. 4.23 will be six days prior. And these are when reports are due into me or when public has to let me know that they're wanting to speak. So uh, the public wanting to speak would be the one day prior. The reports coming in are six days prior. And I think that basically covered it. Okay. 4.37 also said the six days prior. So that's the reports coming in. And that's in order to have them available for posting. Okay, all in favor? Sorry. In favor. 
of the changes to the. I just noticed four point two seven states that the reports will be submitted to the Nesbitt office. <laughs> Perhaps I'm going off of the one that had already been updated. Right. Sorry, no, I will. Need to have I'll just take municipal office under 4.37. Okay. So once again, all in favor? In favor. Opposed? Okay, be it resolved that bylaw number 37 2023 is amended, be read a second time. So we can move that. Councilor Gregor, seconder. Councilor Fisher. Discussion. All in favor? In favor. Opposed? It is resolved that the bylaw number 37 2023 be read a third and final time. And this again is a recorded vote. Uh, can we please move that? Councilor uh, McDonald, seconder. Councilor Fisher. In favor? All in favor? Good in discussion. Favor. Excuse me. Uh, yes, there is discussion. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to say that I am in favor of the land acknowledgement and I am voting against on the second read or third reading uh, against the time and date. Okay. Good point. Okay. So I would echo that. Okay. okay. So, all in favor of the third reading? In favor. Opposed? I don't know if that was Chris that came in. Okay. Okay, Beaver's 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 all the bylaw number 38-2023 being a new organizational bylaw be amended by deleting the clause 4.3C, the word three, and replacing there therefore with the word four. And in clause 5.1, by deleting the word year and replacing therefore the word term. So to me, to move that. Mr. McDonald, seconder. Councillor Fisher. Discussion. Could I speak to this? You sure can. Uh, in taking a look at the organizational bylaw, currently it is uh, requiring that the um, appointment of a deputy had be made on an annual basis. The Municipal Act doesn't speak to whether it has to be annual or per term. Um, I think previously our appointments, even if they were done annually, may have resulted in the same person appointed for the term. It is certainly up to council whether you want the opportunity to rotate the deputy head amongst um, various members of council to give them the experience or whether they would prefer to appoint for the term unless something else happens. So as it is right now, we're saying term. Or the term under this resolution. Yeah, and that's simply because that's the way it's been dealt with. But. Okay. Any further? Um, sorry. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. One more thing. Just under. Um, sorry, it's not actually applicable to this resolution. So okay. maybe do it on secondary. Okay. okay. All in favor? In favor. Be resolved that bylaw number 38 2023 as amended be read a second time. So please move that. I don't know if Councilor McGregor had a second amendment that you wanted to make. Yeah, so and maybe it's not important, but I just note under committees 4.2 B personal and policy committee, it doesn't list that one of our duties to conduct a performance evaluation for the CAO. I think that's in a separate document that I wanted the personal and policy committee, so I just didn't know if we want to note it. I can say this. you note it as well. You want to read another one? That is in four. Four point. To 
Okay, be resolved that the bylaw be amended in clause 4.2 B to include the performance review of the CAO. Do you wish to move that, Councilor McGregor? Sure. Seconder? Councilor Fisher? Discussion? All in favor? In favor. Well, the second reading, right? Yes, second reading as amended. Yeah. Uh, be it resolved that file number 38 2023 as amended be read a second time. So, can somebody please move that? Councillor McDonald, seconder. Councillor Fisher. Councillor Jones, she's a Councillor Jones. That's it. Switch. I think it's a hat. Bingo. <laughs> All the <jokes. laughs> um, Yeah, Councillor Jones was a seconder. Discussion? All in favor? In favor. It is all the bylaw number 38 2023 be read a third and final time. So to move that. Councillor Fisher, seconder. Councillor McGregor, this is a recorded vote on a third, re third reading. All in favor? In favor. Move to unfinished business. Now, you do have dates here for that. Well, I do. I think it's included in the reports. Okay, so if it was going to the Tuesday, which was decided on, yeah. so January the 19th, February the 20th, March the 19th, April the 16th, May the 21st, June the 18th. July the 16th, August the 20th, September the 17th, October the 15th, November the 19th, and December the 17th. Okay, we have resolved that council meetings of 2024 be held in the third Tuesday of each month as follows, and as she just indicated. And I would maybe add in there that it's at 9 a.m. To move that. Councilor McGraw, seconder. Councilor McGregor, discussion. All in favor? In favor. Opposed? Okay, under utility deficit recovery, whereas board order 824 has been received from the Public Utility Review Board, and whereas the board order approved recovery of the utility deficit from the utility accumulated fund surplus, and whereas motion number 367 from September 15, 2023 meeting indicated that the Public Utilities Board be requested to approve the deficit recovery for, from a combination of utility accumulated fund surplus and a deficit rate rider of $1.86 per thousand gallons of water sold over one year. Now, therefore, be it resolved that motion number 367 be rescinded and the recovery of the utility deficit in the amounts of $87,830 be funded entirely from the utility accumulated fund surplus in accordance with the board order of August 24. Before we... Yeah. It, it's their board order number. So they've issued seven board orders Sorry, prior to ours. It said August, it's just yeah. board order yeah. 24. So somebody please move that. Councilor McGowan, seconder. Councilor McGregor, discussion. All in favor? In favor. Okay, general business be resolved that the proposed fiber path for the north side of Road 46 North and the west side of Road 109 West, located in Northeast 23819 WPM, as outlined on the map attached to correspondence dated December 21st, 2023, from RF now, be approved subject to the terms and conditions of this law installation agreement dated October 26, 2023. So we move that. Councilor Fisher, seconder, Councilor McGregor, discussion. Oh, uh, just Mr. Chairman, with regard to uh, RF now or any of these uh, tile drainage projects from here on, I'd personally like to see them have to be um, directional board under the roads rather than dig them. I know that some takes so long for some of them taken up after. So personally, I'd like to see that from now on if we can include that. I think RF now always has to work. But I agree with the with the other next year. Whoever tall drainage company would be, I would suggest they got to be forward. But thank you. Is, is that something we have to put a motion in for? Well, we'll have 
have to have a resolution. They 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 pour they, under everything. They don't. Thank you. And I believe the, yeah. yeah, I believe the agreement that council agreed to in October of 2023 already stated that they pour. So, but it would be nice to have the other intervening with Eileen or irrigation projects. Yeah. Okay. Further. All in favor? In favor. Okay. We resolved that the fiber fiber path for the north side of Road 36 North and the west side of Road 107 West, located in southwest 6718 WPM, as outlined on the map attached to correspondence dated January 16, 2024, from where I'm now, be approved subject to the terms and conditions of the installation agreement dated October 26, 2023. Mm -hmm. Can we move that? Mr. McGregor, seconder. Mr. Fisher, discussion. All in favor? In favor. Be it resolved that a letter of support to be provided to accompany the nomination of the Sirius River Rec Commission for the Recreation Manitoba Connect 2024 awards. I need to move that. Councilor McGregor, seconder. Councilor McDonald. I'll just give a little insight. There, there's several awards that are available, but it just it came in from AMM in December and it has to be done by next week. I have to have this letter of uh, support in and it's best coming from all of council. So it's just to show some appreciation for what these people have been doing over the last number of years to replace our swimming pool, the uh, getting funds available that, that they've had to work very hard at for several years. And now the, uh, the rank with the new ice plant was a, a phenomenal uh, fundraising efforts that got that project done in a timely fashion that it did. So and I think there needs to be some some recognition of that. And these awards are for that and it's from the province. And so it's just a letter just supporting the nomination. So call the vote. All in favor? In favor. Okay, so be it resolved that the application of by Manitoba Hydro for installation of hydro services to feed an irrigation service along the south of 26817 WPM north of road 46 north be approved. Let's move that please. Council McDonald, seconder. Council McGregor, discussion. All in favor? In favor. Be it resolved that the cybersecurity training year end report for 2023 is prepared by Kelsey Business Solutions and previously circulated to be received. Let's move that please. Councillor Fisher, seconder. Councillor Jones, got a break this time. Discussion? All in favor? In favor. Okay, whereas this position of surplus office furnitures, furnishings was tabled at the December 15, 2023 meeting until the determination is made related to establishment of a public works office. And whereas there is only <clears throat> there is one desk that could be utilized in public works office that could be retained, and whereas the remainder of the furnishings are surplus to the needs of the municipality unless council decides that a satellite office is going to be open. Therefore, be it resolved that the remainder of the surplus furnishings be made available for purchase following a public tender process. Is there some question to do that? <laughs> Councilor Breger, seconder. Councilor McDonald, discussion. Mr. Chairman, I, as I've indicated before, I, I strongly favor uh, a satellite office similar to what uh, was the situation prior to the office being built here and at least having a satellite office. So I'd like to see that furniture retained until such a decision is made. Okay, that's what we're going to um, Mr. Chairman, I just wonder about like a satellite office where it might be with that office uh, over there. You know, we can't we can't utilize it anymore, so that would be my concern. Okay. Mr. Public Works Manager. I I can count a desk um, that I could utilize wherever uh, in whatever the future may hold. Um, seeing as that. Uh, uh, my son has a disability. I prefer to be closer to Wallonisa when I'm doing office work. But I have no problem meeting people 
out early wherever they are. Um, as for not having a proper internet and set up there, I don't think that the computer system would work that well out there either. It would seem that uh, our computer system and the office situation worked there before as it did here in Wallonisa. I think it's just, you know, it's just a case of us not serving the majority of our population very well in that area. Um, and I mean, if you just look at it from a standpoint of, of what council determined back in the early days of amalgamation, um, we felt that in fairness, there should be a satellite office here in Wallonisa. Uh, with that whole situation changed, um, I find it somewhat disturbing and ironic that that the same courtesy isn't being extended to the rural population, which the majority of that population is is north and west of of Nesbitt. If I could, um, the part about if council was going to make a decision on the satellite office going forward was put in there for some kind of a decision to be made um, for a number of reasons. Um, ultimately, when council was deciding on doing the renovations and relocating to Wawanisa, the conversation at that time was that it needed to be one office. It needed to be done for efficiencies. It needed to be done for safety. And at that point, I believe the intent of moving the office here was that there was not going to be a satellite office. If council is wanting to reconsider that, then there are a number of items that we will have to address in the budget that currently are not in there. So it would be such things as the office in Nesbitt doesn't meet safety requirements. It only has one entry and exit. It doesn't meet the um, safety concerns with respect to the asbestos. It doesn't meet the concerns of the working alone policy. So if those are things that council wants to consider, then we are going to need to know that in order to include those additional funds in the budget process. If council doesn't have an intention of going that direction, then I would say the motion as it's put forward would be that indication that you're not looking at a satellite office. Okay, uh, yeah. Councillor Fisher. May I speak? Uh, the office in Nesbitt worked when there was two different municipalities. I think really we should be asking the staff that works in the office what they prefer. Uh, I think they can go out for lunch. They can walk on a sidewalk, paved sidewalk. Uh, I think safety in and I'm not in favor of opening another office in Nesbitt. You're going to have to have a minimum of two more people. Uh, for the safety factor, uh, you can put it in a trailer. But we right now have put off of building a new shop, whereas possibly we could put a satellite office, but it is not in the foreseeable future. And I think it's just impossible to fathom how we're going to make that work. So, and that's about all I got to say about that. Mr. Chairman, in theory, I agree with Councillor Rome that there should be, but just based on my knowledge of what we would potentially need there, I think we would have to do a very big look at the budget and the amount of money it would take to make the office uh, appropriate for um, inhabitants. So, if we do a in in our budget to say come up with numbers of what needs to be done and and such, 
I think then we would see a, a, a broader scope of if it was actually doable or not. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I think, you know, sort of along the lines of what Councillor Jones is saying, this is, this would be a very expensive decision. And when I talk to residents, both rural and village, they are far more interested in us investing money like this in things like our roads. The number of times that residents are attending the office is so important. overall. You know, I'm sure Elaine has numbers on tax payments now. You know, it used to be much more common for people to tax payments, which is a once a year in person. Now we get a high percentage of those electronically. Um, and not in person. So, you know, to, I just don't think the majority of our residents want to see us spending the amount of money and creating the amount of inefficiency that it would create um, to have an office, a secondary office. Mr. Chairman, uh, notwithstanding that this has already been done, but I mean, I think looking back, the the office in Nesbitt was viable. The decision was, is what it is type thing. That office, there was no issues with it. It had, had its health reports and so on and could have remained. Council of the day decided to kind of change the whole position uh, back at that time. Uh, as we all know, sitting around the table here, the original decision was to build in Nesbitt and that that changed with a reconsideration vote. Um, I'm not suggesting that we go in and we put a bunch of money into the old office, albeit I don't think that it is the health concern that's been expressed here. I've never seen any reports saying that that the health department has actually said that is not a viable office health-wise. My thought is more down the road as to a new facility, a uh, shop facility, and, a, and an office being in there for public works and for tax payments at, at certain times of the year. I grant you that there isn't a lot of, uh, of traffic at the office uh, that's necessary, but people do still find it convenient. There's still an older component in our population that prefer to walk in and pay the taxes. And I've heard lots of people from the, uh, the rural parts say that it's not convenient for them to, to drive all the way to Long Beach and do that. Having said that, just on a, um, on a tax time basis, we could make that available to people if there's a public works office in the new facility. Um, Anyhow, that's that's why I oppose getting rid of the furniture. But it, it's probably not it's probably not really uh, costing us a lot, and, and there's not really a lot of money involved in it. But uh, that's that's all I could say. So it's convenience more than anything else of what you're saying, rather than necessity. Or? Well, it was always a matter of convenience when you when you have an office in the center of the municipality, it's convenient for all. When you have an office that's on one side of the municipality, it's convenient for a few. So kind of Gillian, maybe you can, what was our percentage of taxation done through the bank? Those numbers are available on the website. I can dig it out. I just wanted to say from 2015 to now, the amount of walk-in traffic has decreased incredibly. More and more, everything is online. It's not just the taxes, it's, it's but we can do taxes. And also if we are going to reopen an ex um, Accessibility is an issue as well, a consideration. Um, so we take taxes now by e-transfer? Yes. By just paying at the bank that they yeah. go to their and own as bank? As far as older people, a lot of people, a lot of the older. Careful. <laughs> older <than me. laughs> Prefer to pay by check, often in the mail. Yes, okay. A lot of them do that as well. Okay. Just, just speaking to that, Elaine. Um, I know as part of the older generation that uh, it took a little bit of 
figuring it out and phoning you for me to do the first time and I certainly hope e payment. Um, so I know there's lots of people out there still that either don't have a computer or don't use it very well. So, you know, I, I think that there's lots of situations in, in, in uh, our society right now where we're slipping into the e world and it doesn't work for everybody. So, anyway, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Chairman, two things. Um, first thing is, you know, if down the road we were to build a public workshop, um, maybe there is an opportunity to put a second person in that shop for the month of October. It would have to come with a number of other considerations with you know, handling of money and, and security of money and, and all those things. So it's not just it's super simple, but you know, I, I can see considering that uh, for tax time. Um, the second point I'd make in the interest of accuracy is that there was never a decision of the previous council to put the office in this. So I, I want to make sure we're very clear that what Council Rome said is incorrect. Just, just, Mr. Chairman, just to speak to what Council McGregor just said, it was my uh, <clears throat> understanding from the minutes of Council that there was a decision for it to go. And in fact, Council McGregor um, introduced a reconsideration motion and that vote was changed under that reconsideration motion. That's why the office came here under renovation. Would you not agree with that? So, Mr. Chairman, I, I would wholeheartedly disagree with that. And, and again, I would encourage Councillor Rome to verify the things that he is saying publicly before he says them. He is false in what he's saying. Um, and if he checks the minutes, he will see that that is not true. Absolutely, I put forward a reconsideration motion. The motion was to build an office in Wallaby City. It was defeated. I put forward a reconsideration motion. There was never a motion to put to build in there. I'll have to review that. That's not my understanding of the reconsideration. Okay. okay. So we will clarify once you've done that. <clears throat> okay. Hopefully. Anything further on this? So again, it's the present resolution that the remainder of the surplus furniture can be made available for purchase following a public tender process. All in favor? In favor. Opposed? Okay, be it resolved that uh, that Brett McGregor be appointed as deputy head of council for 2024 to assume the role of head of council in his absence. We to move that. Councillor Fisher, second councillor McDonald. Discussion. All in favor? Could, Oops, just sorry. before you that, could I suggest an amendment that, or an addition to that? That would be for 2024 and the remainder of the term. Okay. And that's what the bylaw now says. Okay, you're okay with that amendment? Move our second here. Okay. Okay. All in favor? In favor. Opposed? Okay, whereas the Municipal Act legislates the retention and disposal of municipal records, and whereas the file system for the municipality has been established based on those requirements, now therefore be it resolved that municipal records having surpassed their required retention period be disposed of in the manner outlined in Regulation 53-97. So would you move that, please? Councilor Fisher, seconder. Councilor McDonald, discussion. All in favor? In favor. February date was February the 20th. Okay, if you resolve that this meeting does now adjourn, to meet again on Tuesday, Tuesday February 20th, 2024, at 9 a.m. at the municipal office in Wamanisa. Let me move that, please. Councilor Fisher, seconder. Mr. Gregor, all in favor? In favor.